If seven was a Pokemon, it would have Intimidate as its ability. Yes. Hello everyone and welcome back to the New York Empoleon's Week 2 Team Builder for the GBA Season 10. We are here this week, of course, joined by a member of the front office for the second straight week. It's going to be Yehoodles, though I do hope I cycle through people throughout this season and don't just put all the onus on Yehoodles, since the whole point of this was to not put all the onus on Addison. And, uh, well, just moving it from one version to another seems like a very lateral shift. So the idea is going to be to cycle through the, like, four people I have in my front office and hopefully in different weeks get you to be introduced to different ones of them. Um, but as it stands, Yehoodles is here back with us for week two. So would you like to say hello? I am indeed. Hello. I'm here. I have returned. <laughs> so, um, one thing I definitely should have done last time and didn't was introduce the team that I was facing sooner. So my opponent is the Calgary Flamethrowers, coached by newly promoted Galadite74 assistant coach is CB Marcus for this week. Of course, we do wish Kel all the best in their pursuits, whether they are Pokemon related or otherwise. So we're going to be going head coach versus head coach again. This week is going to be my first home game. So there's a little bit more pressure on this one for me to win it because I get a free point if I do get a win here. Although we did steal the point from the Edmonton Coilers last week. So, uh, you know, we already got rid of one point possible from a home field coach. So if we lose this one, life goes on. Another thing I didn't do last week uh, is tell you what their team was at the beginning of the video. Um, so we're going to do that this time because I think it's going to be useful for you to know the possible mods they could bring. Um, I made some snarky comment like, I don't need to tell you that. And then throughout the video, we re-referenced it. And I feel like it's just helpful to know. So my opponent's team this week is uh, Hisuian, Electrode, Cyclazar, Salazzle, Baxcalibur, Quackwivel, Orthworm, Grimmsnarl, Ursaluna, Ice Q, Colossal, and Slowking. Uh, Electrode and Quackwivel can Terra. Electrode can Terra into either Grass type or Ice type. And Quackwivel can Terra into either Water type or Electric type. So now that that's all squared away, we've told you about my opponent, we've told you about their Pokemon. Let's jump into it. Let's not waste any time. I'm going to search for an opponent for the single battle, and we're going to do this. Um, this video is being recorded just full disclosure before my week one team builder goes live but when i edit it it will be after that video uh goes live so hopefully you've given me feedback on what you liked about the week one team builder i know it was a little bit all over the place that was a little bit intentional just to hope that people would give me feedback on the parts of it that they liked and the parts of it they didn't um so if you haven't done that already please do so for week two post week two so i can get used to it and get into you know a rhythm for week three and beyond um that's that's ideal, just so that I have a good situation and I know what I'm doing. Before we even start the match, let's talk about my first set here. It is Florgis, and it is going to be Choice Scarfed Florgis with both Moonblast and Psychic. It is not a dedicated lead, but if they see that my opponent has uh, Salazzle, it is absolutely something that I want to make sure I use effectively against Salazzle. It is enough speed to guarantee outspeed a Salazzle, and Psychic Oko's pretty much any version that obviously isn't Sash. Otherwise, if I see a lead I don't like and I do happen to lead with the Florges, I have access to both Baton Pass and Trick to mess with my opponent. Um, so even if the Salazzle doesn't come, this is still a valuable Pokemon. And if you look at their team again and you see how Spamble Moonblast is, you will 100% agree that Florges was a bring that didn't really limit my team at all. It's got a really good matchup against Cyclazar, Baxcalibur, and Grimmsnarl, as long as obviously Baxcalibur hasn't already set up a Dragon Dance, as well as tricking something like Orthworm or Ur Ursaluna can really hinder its actual competitive viability in this match. So I like Florges a lot. I think it's going to be a really interesting Mon throughout this matchup, and I think that this is something that ultimately through the team building process I reached this point. I did not start with Choice Scarf Florges, and it's the kind of thing that I really appreciate having mocks like this for to give me access to information and ideas like this that can be viable but aren't initially obvious. Yes. <laughs> Alright. 
bring in the Gen 6 squad and Cerulege. Mm -hmm. Nice. I so I, the Cerulege was one of my favorites when I first saw it, and then I wanted to look for its shiny. It looks exactly the same. <laughs> There was literally no difference between the two. Alright. Oh. Oh. Huh. I entirely knew this was gonna happen, but huh. <laughs> I'm pretending to be surprised. Yeah, this is the interesting okay. part. Now what? <laughs> Pretty straightforward Grimmsnarl. Well, yeah, if you're gonna go Grimms, like that's the thing is like if you're gonna go Grimmsnarl, then I just go into Fortress if I predict that. Yeah. <laughs> Going hard Fortress on a Salazzle is super scary. An <laughs> yeah. Because it, it is a Sash lead, so I could just let this die. Yeah. The question is, do I just stay in Click Psychic? And then just like let the Grim Snarl in for free. I don't think so. I actually think this is the play I make. It's risky. Well. Not gonna have the same problems as last week, as with Greninja, we are going with a Protean set this week. Now, I know there was a Protean nerf, and it's only the first move that I select I can switch into the type of, but you'll note that this is actually Choice Banded, so it doesn't matter. We are going to opt with Shadow Sneak over um, Water Shuriken because it is physical, and we are going with a Choice Banded max attack set that can slam into my opponent's roster with Low Kick. That is the most spammable type against my opponent's roster, and oddly enough, I'm not bringing Decidueye, my fighting type, because Greninja does the fighting type better than Decidueye. I actually like Decidueye in this matchup. It is the seventh mon, unfortunately. It just didn't quite make the cut. Greninja is my fighting type master, though. It is going to be low kicking, and it is going to be turning into a fighting type, and it's going to be choice banded, and it is going to be getting stabbed, and it's going to be awesome. If I don't need to low kick, I've got U-turn and I've got liquidation uh, for other types of coverage for various mons, and Shadow Sneak is nice for a piece of banded stab priority, as well as turning me into a ghost type, which could be relevant at certain situations in this game. Otherwise, Greninja is not going to have the same genning issues hopefully this week that it had last week because we are going to have it set to Protean and that shouldn't be nearly as difficult to get things in with, so fingers crossed we do not have the same problems this time. Engage. Engage. <laughs> it's a risky You've play. You've engaged, engage. But I think... You'd be more likely to pick a fire move than a uh, poison move there, because of the possible fortress, if that's the prediction you're making. Mm -hmm. It reveals- oh, this is not the right grenade. I never changed it to- okay, I never to do that. Um, if you're gonna kill me here, you're gonna click gun shot, so I'm clicking reflect. There was a pile, and I was about, <laughs> thought I was about to say, <laughs> uh, Grimstar avoided the attack. <laughs> <laughs> I dodged U turn. Uh, Which Grimstar promptly celebrated about. Slazzle hurt. You have a reflect up. I do. It's pretty cool. It's Marth. Oh, I get that nickname. It's because the voice actor was named Spike. Please put that as like a comment on one of the videos, because no one's going to get it. <laughs> yes. Last time I had two battles, and so I sort of sped up the second one. This time I think I'm just going to stick with the one mock battle, although there were changes to sets between then and what you'll see in the actual final build of the team. And so one of those big changes is this fortress, and I think what I'll do, maybe, if people are enjoying it, is where there are changes, let the battle run, um, and uh, just talk about them over it, and then when the set is correct, I'll just have that screen where it talks about the exact set um, separately from the battle itself. And I'm just going to see how that balances out. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but one thing to note about Fortress 
is I'm about to set up Stealth Rocks in this match. Um, I actually don't have rocks. I have changed that off to be Iron Defense because Iron Defense Body Press on Fortress can just win the game. And I think it actually puts me in situations where Fortress becomes an offensive threat as opposed to purely a defensive answer. Um, rapid Spin is obviously nice for Spikes or T-Spikes my opponent decides to set. Volt Switch is still there for momentum. But Iron Defense Body Press can make sure that Backscalibur can't break through me very easily and I can otherwise survive hits. Um, additionally, Ursa Luna is a major problem. Um, but if Fortress gets an Iron Defense off one or two, um, and I haven't taken like very much if any damage I am going to be able to survive and be able to fire back with body presses doing enough damage to Ursaluna where it's not going to be such a threat that I will lose the game the problem that Fortress faces is it's so passive but I think in this case body press again we were talking about how fighting types are super good is spammable enough that it's going to be worth using Fortress as sort of an offensive defensive mon and that's really valuable to have access to in this matchup because Fortress can look like setup fodder, but the fact that it can set up itself is going to hopefully keep it in line and keep everything else that's trying to set up on it away from the field. Yeah. Which I guess I could put over Stealth Rock. It's not like I really want to click it anyway at any point, so I might as well. In case I find myself in a situation like this. Mm hmm. Because Stealth Rock, it's like. It click. So yeah. Faster is Super Ninja. I still don't outspeed. Good. This is riveting. This is what people come for. Yep. Yeah, if I was at plus six defense, I'd feel so much more comfortable right now. Yeah. If you were at plus six defense, I think I'd just lose. Oh, wait, there's a Slazzle. Mm -hmm. And then I'd have to suffer Stealth Rocks here at this last one. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Why did that do- oh you don't- wait what? Oh you're defensive right? Seemingly? Yeah I am. So you don't have a pack investment? <laughs> wait. I did nothing. I did nothing. Do I lose this 1v1 now? <laughs> oh you're not guts boosted. Yeah. It's okay, I crit here. Oh. This feels like the longest reflect of all time. Yeah, it does. I'm just gonna spend half of it clicking Trailblaze. <laughs> <laughs> there really is no reason for me to be Trailblaze on this set. I'm so slow. I'm bulky. I could preserve this. <laughs> <laughs> a little giggle. A little giggle. <laughs> um, the problem is, like, you're fast now. I am. And my priority doesn't hurt you. But also, we know how much I did to that. I think it's just this. Rune Sword. Risky. I haven't revealed my fourth move. I understand that. But I mean, it's not. Like, what choice do I have on some level? Terra Fairy. Cerule Edge. We are back again this week with a defensive offensive Terra Fairy Cerule Edge. This time rocking out with Weak Armor. I think Weak Armor is a underrated ability, period, but also on Cerule Edge specifically because it does have the ability to pretty much take almost any one move. And that's really important. It's dual fire ghost typing along with the fact that I could tear it into fairy makes it very hard to kill in a single hit. We get plus two speed. We get plus two attack when we go for a swords dance. Our air balloon prevents Ursa Luna from clicking earthquake or facade in terms of immediate pressure on Cerule Edge. Terra fairy means that if it does click crunch, we're going to resist that too. They're going to have to make those reads. 
Once I get a Swords Dance up, we've got Close Combat, we've got Bitter Blade, we've got Shadow Sneak. This thing, like last week, can come in and win the game. However, I actually did consider a more defensive Cerule Edge build, and I want to give it a shout out here because there was a temptation to run Will-O-Wisp, Disable, Substitute, some interesting moves on the Cerule Edge because I don't think that the Ursaluna is going to bring more than one way to hit Cerule Edge. I mean, maybe it's going to have both Fire Punch and Crunch so it can pop the Air Balloon, but if it doesn't, and I obviously Willow isn't going to help me against it, but uh, if I can disable its one way to hit Cerule Edge with like a Protector after a Substitute, then I can just stall it out. Um, and Bitter Blade is a great way to stall things out while doing damage because you're just going to get HP back. And I did consider that kind of Cerule Edge set, but the offensive output this thing provided was just so impressive that I just felt like, why not? Give it another chance. Obviously, we're not going to be hopefully running the wrong Greninja, so it's not going to be my only win con this week. Um, and it might be more of a breaker than a sweeper, but I do think the idea of having something that can switch it on both of the Ursulina stabs, not just immediately crumble to it, have the Terra Fairy so I don't just die to Crunch or some other coverage move like Shadow Claw, and then immediately fire back with close combat or offer me setup is just so valuable in this matchup. And I think Cerule Edge gave me something that other Pokemon couldn't even hope to match. In this mock, obviously, you see that I went Terra Ghost. This was something that I was debating between and still don't actually know the answer to. In the comments, tell me what you would do here if you'd go Terra Ghost or Terra Fairy. Now, here's the benefits to Terra Fairy and why I ended up settling on them. Cyclazar and Baxcalibur both have very scary dragon spammable moves that they are going to be using. Additionally, Cyclazar will be spamming knockoff, likely if it does come, and I want to be able to resist that. Grimmsnarl hitting a dark move is also problematic, whereas Terra Fairy does not make me weak to Fairy, and that makes it more able to switch in on the Grimmsnarl, or at least stay in on the Grimmsnarl, and set up in front of it. Ursa Luna, yes, it can now hit me with normal moves if I'm Terra Fairy instead of Terra Ghost, but... Once it pops the air balloon, it's going to be able to spam ground moves more safely anyway. I don't think I care that much if it can hit me with a facade. It's going to kill me with Headlong Rush or any other ground move that it decides to run. Whereas Terra Ghost obviously does give me access to immunity to Quackwivel going for close combat, so I can't just die to that. Maintains a resistance to Salazzle's poison moves, which does outspeed me. And doesn't make me weak, or at least gives me a full immunity to Ursaluna's normal stab no matter what. And I think that these are really hard decisions that I'm trying to make about which Terra makes the most sense in a matchup like this, and I would love to hear what people say about it, because this is the kind of thing that will make me a better battler if I'm listening to what you're all saying and the ideas that you're having, because you're able to think about it more calmly when there's not actually the pressure of, like, getting in this fight, and I just think that actually helps a lot. So whenever someone asks for help on the internet, especially with something like this, they're asking because you have a more clear mind than they do because they are in a stressful, strenuous situation where they have pressure on them and you don't. And usually people who have no pressure are going to make better decisions. So that's the reason that I decided to, you know, go with Fairy over Ghost. Um, but as you can see, there's a lot of reasons that I could go with Ghost. And in this mock, you'll see the value or maybe lack thereof of Terra Ghost on the Saru Ledge as opposed to Fairy. But in the actual battle, you will see Terra Fairy. Now what happens? Probably go go in front to lift this and do the oh yeah I mean It's time Dragon Dance Mew is here with the mirror herb so I can switch it in on something like Quackwivel going for an Aqua Step and then continue to outspeed it. Something like Ursa Luna trying to set up a Swords Dance and be cheeky. Something like Baxcalibur setting up a Dragon Dance and outspeed it. There are so many setup threats on my opponent's team, it just makes sense for me to run a Mirror Herb, get Mew in if I can on setup, and then outspeed and KO things. Now, Drain Punch I use as recovery, but also, like we've said a hundred times throughout this video, Fighting is one of the best types I could put on a set this week. I'm just going to go through it real quick. Cyclazar, Baxcalibur, Orthworm, Ursaluna, Ice Q, Colossal, all weak to fighting, Electrode, Quackwivel, Grimmsnarl don't appreciate fighting, at least they aren't resistant to it, and yes, there's a Salazzle and a Slowking, I need to be able to handle those two. Well, you know what, Slowking doesn't really threaten Mew very much, and Salazzle is weak to Psychic, so I'm not as stressed about those two mons either, and we are going to run Psychic Fangs because my opponent 
particular mock opponent for these two weeks. Really like screens. It's also the strongest physical stab that I could get that's 100% accurate. Um, and so Psychic Fangs it is. And Play Rough was good coverage because, yes, I can hit Grim Snarl with Dragon Punch, but I'd rather hit it super effectively, and I had the coverage slot to do it. Similarly, it is a stronger hit on Baxcalibur. It gives me a super effective move if Quackable doesn't Terra, and I just think that's probably going to be the most valuable option for me this week. That said, Mirror Herb is probably the part that I'm most excited for. Personally, I feel like this is the quintessential Mew. I feel like this is what Mew by de design is what it's supposed to be, right? It is synchronized, so it matches the opponent's status. It is, like, it has transform, that's, like, what it does. It matches the opponent exactly. Mirror Herb just matches the opponent's stat boost. I actually think, and maybe he would be busted as hell, they should make an ability for Mew that is sort of like a Mirror Herb of some kind, just so that it's, like, again, it's mimicking its opponent, that's, like, what it's trying to do. I just think that's a cool thing, um, and I think it's really quintessentially, like, a Mew thing to do. Um, but that said, this is one of my other sweepers. Obviously, Cerule Edge is a big possibility. Mew, probably a bigger one, takes any hit, outspeeds everything up through Baxcalibur, and then after plus one, can outspeed everything. And this thing is just terrifying for my opponent to deal with. Probably going to force them to Terra, probably going to force them to use resources, and I am okay with that. This thing is incredible this week. Stayed in. Yep. That's fine. Should have just clicked. Should have just clicked Play Rift. No, I think I'm in Ice Shard range, which is annoying. I'm also not sure if another Drain Punch even kills. Am I in my short range? Probably. Let's find out. Hmm. How many turns did this stupid thing are left? <laughs> Is Psychic Fangs like um, Brick Break in that it gets rid of it first? I don't know. Not no. by the way. Hmm. Unfortunate. Yes, it is. Apparently. Good mom. Also, that would have told me a point right there. What if I? Because I lived in under five. Oh. Hmm. Aqua Jet? No, I'm just wearing seven scarves. I'm really uh, fabulous. Super fashionable. Oh, damn it, you did Terra Water. If you didn't Terra Water, it doesn't kill. <laughs> Actually, if you're I Jolly... I know that it kills. If you're Jolly, no, if you're Jolly, it's guaranteed. If you're Jolly, max attack. If you don't have max attack, it doesn't necessarily kill. Admittedly, Garchomp doesn't get to do anything in this mock at all. It doesn't come into the battle, it doesn't actually get used, and in this league, that actually means Garchomp would not get marked for a game appearance. That's okay. Um, it's not like I care that much about my Pokemon getting game appearance stats, but... Uh, it is notable that in this league, that's the way that that works. And I just wanted to address that since it's the first time it's come up. This Garchomp, though, is amazing. It is a sub Sword Dance Leftovers Garchomp that is fully offensive, no bulk investment to speak of, with just Earthquake and Brick Break. Earthquake is good for basically everything. The only things uh, that are like immune to it or, or anything are Earthworm. And then anything that is air balloon. Otherwise, this earthquake is so spammable that I just feel great about it. Brick Break is there for the Orthworm, which doesn't really threaten me back in any way. Um, and also gets rid of screens in front of the, you know, Grim Snarl or anything like that that's trying to set them up to protect them from the Garchomp. By having some substitute, I feel much safer 
against things like Ursaluna or Grimmsnarl. I can scout out their intents. Um, I can potentially get a sub up before Salazzle gets to come in uh, and try to Toxic Stall me. I can do it before the Electrode gets to come in and be Terra Ice. Um, and so just having that makes me feel safer. I did go with the leftovers instead of the Lumberry. Lumberry would let me set up a substitute even in front of Salazzle, but I just think that the repeatability of this is really helpful, and leftovers gives me the ability to do it over and over again. And since this isn't really a bulky Garchomp, it's way more offensive. The leftovers just give it a little bit of added uh, survivability, perhaps, um, just like not putting itself in range of things immediately with a substitute. But, like I said, it doesn't really come in this match, so it doesn't get a chance to do its thing, but I think this is a valuable sixth member of the team, and I'm hopeful that it gets a chance to showcase just how destructive it can be, because outside of Orthworm, there is literally nothing off the ground. And Orthworm's not off the ground. Just want to add that caveat, because I think it's... It just it has the ability, okay? It has an ability that makes it immune to ground-type deck. But I could trick a Scarf onto you. You already tear it, so I'm not. Jokes on you, I'm switching into my last one. <laughs> oh, the seventh <laughs> one! <laughs> I'm secretly Terra Normal. That's a great animation. I liked Florges, honestly. Yeah, and you. Gave me an answer to Electro, which is good. I did yeah. switch over, so I have a couple more switches to make for uh, moves and stuff, but... Alright, I like this team. Yeah, seems a lot better. We're running with it. Hopefully it works. Cool. Battles tomorrow. Thank you all for watching again. Although I probably cut out the first time I said that, so thank you all so much for watching. <laughs> Take care, everybody, again.